In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Is it not one of the most joyful days each year in the diocese when we gather for the ordination, for the infusion of new blood into this line of configuration to Christ, of service, service to the church, to the world, and to so many of you, the faithful, who are gathered here. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to provide shepherds for your people, pour out a spirit of reverence and fortitude in your church to make these your servants, worthy ministers at your altar, and ardent yet general, gentle heralds of your gospel. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, let no one have contempt for your youth, but set an example for those who believe in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Until I arrive, attend to the reading, exhortation, and teaching. Do not, do not neglect the, the gifts you have, which was conferred on you through the prophetic words with the imposition of hands by the presbyterate. Be diligent in these matters, be absorbed in them, so that your progress may be evident to everyone. Attend to yourselves and to your right teachings. Persevere in task, for by doing so, you will save both yourselves and those who listen to you. The word of the Lord. Señor esté con ustedes. Y con tu espíritu. Del Santo Evangelio según San Juan. Gloria a ti, Señor. Al anochecer del día de la resurrección, estando cerrado a las puertas de la casa donde se hallaban los discípulos por miedo a los judíos, se presentó Jesús en medio de ellos y les dijo, la paz esté con ustedes. Dicho esto, les mostró las manos y el costado. Cuando los discípulos vieron al Señor, se llenaron de alegría. De nuevo les dijo Jesús, la paz esté con ustedes. Como el Padre me ha enviado, así también los envío yo. Después de decir esto, sopló sobre ellos y les dijo, Reciban el Espíritu Santo. A los que les perdonen los pecados, les quedarán perdonados. Y a los que no se los perdonen, les quedarán sin perdonar. Palabra del Señor.
let Jack Thomas Riker, who is to be ordained a deacon, come forward. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain this man, our brother, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know him to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that he has been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose Jack Thomas Reichert, our brother, for the order of the diaconate. Let those to be ordained priests come forward. Robert Clark Blood. John Gregory Clather. Clather. Charles Arthur Euler. Warren Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these men, our brothers, for the order of the priesthood. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Robert, John, and Chuck, we're all gathered here with you to join our prayers and our thanks to God for your calling to the sacred priesthood, and Jack, for your calling to the diaconate. And we offer our thanks to God for the grace given to you for the acceptance of this calling. We're very grateful this morning in a special way for the presence of your family members all of them, but most especially your parents. Through them, you received God's gift of life, and even more, your parents and your families were the first contributors to your for formation. Pope St. John Paul has reminded us of the pillars of formation, spiritual, intellectual, pastoral, and in a certain way, especially the human formation. Parents and family members, Thank you for your lifetime of contributions that have been such a part of your sons being here today. My thanks also to and welcome to so many from the seminaries where you have studied. I'm very grateful for very Reverend Father Jeffrey Eikhoff, the President and Director of St. Gregory the Great Seminary, Father Divis and Father Rodriguez, all from Lincoln. So glad you're here. Father Joseph Taphorn, the Rector of St. Paul Seminary in St. Paul, and to Father Rodriguez, Father Zamara, representing Mundelein Seminary, and to the other faculty members, I know the sisters are here from Lincoln, 
so grateful to have all of you here at a moment like this and the part that you have had in bringing not only these men, but all of us to this day. I think all of, thank all of the deacons who are here today, particularly in solidarity with Jack and his ordination as a new member of your rank. And of course, to all of my brother priests, those of the Diocese of Rockford and those from beyond our borders. How good it is to have all of you here as we ordain three new members to the Presbyterate. But brothers, especially for you. You may have the feeling that your ordination to the priesthood or the diaconate today has been a long time in coming. And you'd be right to say that you've waited basically your whole lifetime for this moment. But we might say that God has waited even longer, an eternity for this ceremony and for your ordination. And we can say that because in his eternal being, God has known each of us, has known you, for all eternity from the mystery of his divinity without beginning. He has loved all of you and called you to this moment even before you were conceived or born. And today it's in that context that you embrace the calling to the diaconate and the priesthood. We get the sense of what the diaconate to which Jack is about to be ordained is about from the readings that we just heard. That first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we're told that the early church set aside seven men, the first deacons. Jack, you must be especially attentive to that passage. What at first seems to be a worthy, but perhaps a menial task to which they are assigned the service at table is in fact a far deeper reality. Like all four of you today, the first deacons received the laying on of hands. Those men were set aside to sacred service in the context of the church's mission. They were dedicated by the church to the particular task of service in the imitation of Christ as a means of assisting and supporting the priestly ministry of the apostles, especially by caring for the needy. Set aside, dedicated to God, assisting the priestly obligations. That summarizes the divine and eternal nature of the diaconal calling that Jack is receiving this morning. In the second reading from St. Paul to the young Timothy, Robert, John, and Chuck, we're told that through the imposition of hands then and today by the bishop and by the presbyterate, here present, a gift and responsibility are conferred on you. It is that by your speech, your conduct, your love, your faith, and your purity, you will be a channel of divine grace. You are called and you are conformed to Jesus Christ today in a manner that is so sacred you will act not only in the Lord's name but in his very person. You'll now offer the Mass, representing the Last Supper and the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. You will, for, you will fulfill the great gift recalled in the Gospel from Easter night, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, whose sins you retain are retained. Taken together, the message is that you have been set aside from the eternal beginning like the Levites of old. There is a world that awaits and needs your instruction, your faithful conveyance of our Catholic faith, the message of Jesus Christ, by your words and your example. And what all of you, Robert, John, Chuck, and Jack, are doing today is not your preference. It is not your choice. It is your yes to the personal and mysterious call of Jesus. Really, why you? Why any of us? It's not your merit. It's not our merit. It's Christ's calling. And that is why you and the church can have such joy and confidence at a moment like this. Jesus does, does not just call. He walks with you and he gives you every grace that you need. 
and how grateful I am for another particular detail, something that the, the diocese is so proud of, that all four of our candidates are coming from one particular high school on this particular year. The Catholic identity that we seek to place within our young people in the honor of Boylan High School this year with all four of our candidates. And what a bar and what a model it has set for all of our schools, for all of our families, and for our Catholic identity. Brothers, you'll shortly answer some questions about your resolve, your commitment to being faithful. Jack, you'll be asked if you're resolved as a deacon to assist the priestly order, priests and bishop. Your response, I do, recognizes that yours is a service. You'll be asked if you'll hold and teach the faith completely. You will commit to the gift of celibacy, not as an arbitrary rule, but as a gift uniting you to the celibate Christ himself. Guard and live that promise well. And you will respond, I do, to the promise to pray the Liturgy of the Hours and in honesty to pray much more for the adoration of God and the needs of the world. Robert, John, and Chuck, you'll be asked if you resolve to carry out your priestly duties as fellow workers with the bishops, your own and the College of Bishops. You'll be asked if you will teach and live the whole of the Catholic faith and if you will celebrate the sacraments with the reverence for the infinite holiness that they bring to the world and to the faithful. These questions and your responses of I do present only an image, only a reflection of the full reality of the gift and task that you begin today. Each one of you is a sacred minister, a special friend of Christ himself in a very earthen vessel. Respect this gift and pray every day for the grace to be faithful to this calling. Finally, finally, all of you will give away your own willfulness by promising respect and obedience to the bishop and his successors. In exactly the same words as a deacon and as a priest, the church asks for your public commitment to this reality for your good and for the good of the whole church. Think well as you respond to that question. Live it fully and without any ambiguity. And to all of you, the faithful who've blessed us with your presence here this morning. You all share with us the hope and the joy of this moment. And I ask you, please pray for these young men. Support them. Counsel them well in that blending of the lay and the ordained vocations that make up the fullness of the church and of parish life. We so count on your spiritual support for our priestly ministry. Brothers, don't hesitate to answer yes and to face with hope the future that Jesus is today placing before you. You've thought and you've prayed and you've been in formation for some time now. You have come to this moment. Embrace it joyfully, embrace it confidently. And for all of us here and with the whole church, universal in place and time, let's proceed now. God has already waited an eternity for this day. Let's not make him wait any longer. Jack, dear son, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. And so I ask, do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity 
in order to assist the priestly order and benefit the Christian people? Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? Do you resolve to keep forever this commitment to remain celibate as a sign of your dedication to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in the service of God and man? Do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole people? Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, whose body and blood you are a minister at the altar? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Dear sons, before you enter the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve with the help of the Holy Spirit to discharge without fail the office of the priesthood in the presbyteral rank as worthy fellow workers with the order of bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? Do you resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely, preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith? Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently in accordance with the Church's tradition the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? Do you resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care by observing the command to pray without ceasing? Do you resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ, the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Please stand. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, 
whom in his kindness he raises to the sacred orders of the diaconate and the priesthood.
mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministries. Through Christ our Lord. Draw near, we pray, Almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church, his body adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your sons' apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on this servant of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon him, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that he may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in him every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in his conduct so that by the example of his way of life, he may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may he remain strong and steadfast in Christ, so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served, but to serve, he may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
receive the gospel of Christ whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Please stand. My dear people, let us pray to God, the Almighty, the All Powerful Father, that He will pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven on these, His servants, whom He's chosen for the office of priest. Please be seated.
Draw near, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity, it is you who apportion all graces. Through you everything progresses, through you all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ your Son by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the earlier covenant, offices arose, established through mystical rites. When you set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you choose men next in rank and dignity to accompany them and assist them in their task. So too in the desert, you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of 70 wise men, and with their help he ruled your people with greater ease. So also upon the sons of Aaron you poured an abundant share of their father's plenty, that the number of the priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, who is Apostle and High Priest of our Confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim, and he made his apostles, consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. You provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation throughout the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness to grant us these helpers that we need to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, to these your servants the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they henceforth possess this office which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishop. And by the example of their manner of life, may they instill right conduct. May they be worthy co-workers with our order, so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined with us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to their care and for the whole world. And so, so may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ be transformed into your one people and made perfect in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God.
The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard you and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard you and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people of God, the holy people to be offered to God. 
Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood, the people he has made his own. But with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nurse them with the word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you, firstly, for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true.
communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Cosagnus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, which we make to you also for these your servants whom you've been pleased to raise to the orders of the diaconate and of the priesthood. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you've given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. <clears throat> Through Christ our Lord. 
through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Fieles a la recomendación del Salvador y siguiendo su divina enseñanza, nos atrevemos a decir, Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día, perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en la tentación y líbranos del mal. Líbranos de todos los males, Señor, y concédenos la paz en nuestros días para que, ayudados por tu misericordia, vivamos siempre libres de pecado y protegidos de toda perturbación mientras esperamos la gloriosa venida de nuestro Salvador, Jesucristo. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Okay, so we'll put the, the kneeler down again. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity, through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Before the final blessing, just my own word of thanks to all who've been participants here, to all of you who've come and how much it means to not only those ordained, but to all of us to have such a full cathedral, the representation of the diocese. And even beyond that, because we have the blessings of technology this afternoon with the live streaming and so many others who even at a distance have been able to follow and participate. I'm grateful to all the communications department and who have made that possible. My thanks to all of the seminarians who are here. They look and they hope and they dream at a day like this, and it is a part of the, ref the reflections, the prayer, and the formation that goes into the preparation for the reception of the calling to the sacred priesthood. Of course, my very sincere thanks to the choir and the magnificence of what you've done for us over the last several hours. My thanks to Father St. Jules as the uh, rector of the cathedral and all that uh, has gone into making this place such a spiritual and a home for uh, all of us. To Father Bachland and all of those who have organized this ceremony, many and sincere thanks. And as always to my brothers, the Knights of Columbus, with their continuing generosity of adding solemnity and prayers to moments like this. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace, that you may faithfully discharge your duties. Amen. May he who has entrusted deacons with preaching the gospel and of serving both altar and people make you fervent witnesses to the gospel and ministers of charity in the world. Amen. May he make you who are priests true shepherds to provide the living bread and the word of life to the faithful, so that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs>